is Jeremiah's J Man Monero with J Man Seminars, and we're here live with J Man's Ed Talks. And today we're doing, for the first time ever, a live video panel. So please, as you're watching, if you have questions, please type them in the contents below. If you want to subscribe to our live broadcasts, all you have to do is type video for life in the comments below. Okay, video for life in the comments below, and that'll get you subscriber or messenger bot. We'll reach out and we'll, we'll get that going. So let's get started. I'm gonna introduce our guests. First, we have uh, Morgan Franklin coming to us from Kentucky. Uh, Morgan, how are you doing today? I am well here in the land of bourbon and horses, my friend. <laughs> Fantastic, yeah. and then we have, we have Jen, I don't wanna mess it up, Bally. 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 Oh, man, I'm, I, yeah, so I close. Right. You crushed it. <laughs> Nobody gets it right. So we'll just hey, call you Jenny. Jenny. I like that. Just um, call Jenny, me Jenny B. Yeah. Where are you from in Florida? Central Florida, right smack dab between Daytona and Orlando. Awesome. Awesome. Okay, so again, this is a video panel. So our two guests, we're supposed to have a third. He was supposed to join us from California, but his wife said that he should they should stay one more day in, in uh in Disney World. And so happy wife. We know that story. Yeah, uh, so I he's in Disney that. World and, and we wish him well. But in the world of live broadcasting, things will always happen. And you just kind of right. have to roll with it and, and have a good time. So type your questions below. I'm going to start it off here because I know we won't have questions right off the bat. So let's start with Morgan. What kinds of videos do you make? So I will make a video about absolutely anything and everything in my local market. You know, obviously I started out making videos about listings, um, but I quickly found out that listing videos, while, you know, they might catch that one person or those two people that are super into that particular property, but the most engaging videos are about my local market, you know, new restaurants, events, like one of the silliest and dumbest videos I ever made. I ran a bounce house 5K. So it's a 5K out in the middle of the field with a ton of bounce houses in the middle of it. And I grabbed a GoPro and I ran this thing and it was just such a curious and odd thing that it got tons of engagement, tons of comments. And I actually ended up getting three buyers off of a video where I never said a damn word about real estate. <laughs> um, so I, it doesn't matter. My, my camera goes with me everywhere I go and anything that might even be remotely interesting to my audience, I'm filming, I'm making an audience so I can get people to know, like, and trust me. And eventually, you know, call me to uh, buy or sell some real estate. Very good. Right. And so same question for you, Jen. Uh, you know, I'm sort of in the same boat, except I don't focus a whole lot on, I, I'm, I sort of love my comfort zone where I'm in sort of my office and I can control the environment. I don't like to be out in public. It's just not what I like. Um, but really, I really enjoy doing like educational stuff. So educating the buyer and the seller, um, educating different realtors in my market. I really like that sort of um, that aspect of video. I think it's a great way to get good information to a lot of people, but I find that I you know, focusing not so much on real estate is also a lot of fun. So really anything like him, I just don't, um, I don't, I guess I don't have one certain area of something that I love, right? Does that make sense? So anything, I mean, whatever people will watch, right? Even if they don't like it and they give me negative comments, I love that. Yay, me. You're still <laughs> right? engaging. Engagement is engagement, right? So before we went on the broadcast, you said, you also do live videos about painting. I and that do. Kind of I'm also a painter. Like, yeah, people who have similar interests, kind of totally nothing to do with real estate. Nothing. Right? So, right. so yeah, I'll do I'll do painting trainings and tutorials and sort of how to clean a piece of furniture or you know things like that. And it's and it's fantastic. It's a whole different audience, um, but it's truly the same concept, right? It's getting my business out there. It's engaging with people. People then can know who I am, sort of some of my hobbies and interests. So, yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, as long as, like I said earlier, as long as you're genuine, I think it's great. And what better way to do it than doing a hobby or something that you love and enjoy outside of the business? Because you can't be business all the time. That's just, it's just not even realistic. Right. So, 
I, I guess the moral, like both of you hit it right on is that the virtual tours are, are what it's all about, right? You're not going right. to the house going, here's the kitchen, right? You're not. <laughs> right. But what I would say, it's a great place to start. And I think that's where some agents are sort of, um, they're sort of numb, like they're, they, they're paralyzed to even get started because they're like, how do I say this without being terribly blunt? Real estate is terribly boring unless you're in it, period. <laughs> it's terribly boring. And unless you're in it, you really don't get too hoots about it. So, But I think taking yourself and putting yourself in an open house and saying, hey, this is my open house and here's the kitchen and come and see me today is a great way to get started and comfortable because not very many people are going to watch. Right? Morgan, anything you want to add to that? That can be the most intimidating little black yes. circle on the face of the earth. And so like when you first start making videos, it's so uncomfortable. And like the very first time I made a video, I almost hyperventilated. Like, mm -hmm. and I was the only person in the room. Like there's nobody around. And so, you know, like the, just doing that Facebook live and getting started with the open house is a great idea. Um, just getting used to being in front of the camera yeah. uh, is kind of, is key. But then after, I don't know, somewhere around 10 videos. And I think, I'm going to make the 200th episode of the Lex Kentucky Real Estate Show probably Monday or Tuesday. And then I've done over 300 videos total. Um, and so it's somewhere around 20 or 30, but like I still get more and more and more and more comfortable. Like, I don't know if you guys yeah. saw J-Man's yeah. intro, but he was super animated and all over the place. And it was great. It was engaging and getting from, I'm here to talk about real estate to that where you're really over animated and into it. It just takes time yeah. and practice. It really does. And I think what I would say about that is when I first started, I was, especially with live video, I was like, oh, crap, what if nobody shows up? Oh, crap, what if somebody shows up? Like, <laughs> you know, either way, what do you do, right? And so it's just, it's just doing it. It's just doing it. And then talking to yourself like a crazy person. Yep. That's it. So, Jen, on live video, so I, I suck at live video. I've... I've done it a few times. I haven't had a whole lot of engagement. I actually tried a, a talk show where I used an app where I could do different camera angles and like I had a producer there working it, but normally oh, like, on. yeah, it's called uh, Switcher Studio. Go check it out. It's a free app. Um, but anyway, um, how do you get people to engage and like how do you produce live videos that actually work? Because so far I suck at it and had zero success at it. Well, I would say what is your goal? Right. Because I think live video is going to be your best avenue to get. Well, you know, Facebook pages are sort of going with the dinosaur, in my opinion, because of all the advertising laws and all of that. So I think we're facing a huge challenge with getting people just to engage. So for me personally, I don't think it matters what you talk about. I think it matters if you're on for a period of time and people begin to say, what is she gonna talk about today? And I think just being who you are, and you know, I've got, uh, I've got a potty mouth. I'm not afraid to use it when I'm on live video because that's who I am. I mean, we are gonna so, get along. We are gonna be friends. Right? I mean, <laughs> it is what it is. I mean, I'm in real estate. I drink a lot of alcohol and I swear a lot. It's just who I am. So, um, but then I'm not afraid to tell, you know, I'm not afraid of that. And so when I was, saying earlier you know one of my favorite things to do is in the evening i pull my hair back i take my makeup off i drink my wine and i talk to friends and family who i don't get to see all the time because i am you know i'm not in my the market that i was born and raised in and it's great i don't talk about my business i talk about their business i talk about what they're doing and they don't have to go live but they get to chime in and do comments and it's really engaging because i'm talking about them Right. And yep. so I think that's the key is if you are talking directly to your audience, um, like, oh, hey, I'm so glad that you joined me. You know, hi, there's my sister. How you doing? I love you. Kate. You know, I think that yeah. kind of thing gets people and they want to come because they honestly they want you to say their name. Right. OK, so you got to start there. I think that's where it's at. Does that answer your yeah, question, I, or did I just go yeah. down a rabbit trail? Yeah. No, no, no. no. I mean, you <laughs> to deliver value. Same, same right. recipe applies everywhere. Right. I just haven't figured out how to do it with live, so I'm going to give it a shot. 
Yeah, just do. You just start doing it, and then talk to the person who's there with you. Like people here, I like. I don't do. I don't like live as well on my business page as I do my personal page because they don't push it out like they used to. Right? Yeah, because you're gonna get Donald reach. Yeah, yeah. So the, it's not as engaging. So do it on your on your private on your regular page, and then do whatever you love. I don't know whatever well, it is that you do. Here's a tip that I'll I'll throw out there because I do a lot of live video, and obviously besides the show like this, uh, I use a, a program called Live Leap, and what it does is it syndicates your live broadcasts to wherever you want it. So as soon as I go live, let's say for my J Man Seminars page, it shares it to my personal page, it shares it oh, to yeah. whatever other groups that I'm in, so that it's what some. Somebody could manually do, but I'm not. Once I go live, I'm not going to go. Hold on, everybody, and then go and share it to all of these other. And that yeah. helps. Plus the fact mm -hmm. of the uh, scheduling ahead of time helps as well. Oh, yeah. So if, if it's that does help. They want it. To be here, uh, they'll definitely. They can get reminded with the system, which is fantastic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, let's go to our next question then. Let's talk about equipment because Morgan said, "Have phone will travel." So <laughs> you use your phone mostly. What 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 other kind of Kind of uh, equipment programs that kind of stuff. So I actually, in a weird way, got into real estate because my wife is a wedding photographer, and oh. I started photographing um, stuff with her. A friend of mine who was a real estate agent said, "Hey, can you come photograph a listing?" I said, "Wait a minute, the photos are what sell these damn things. I'm getting paid 150 bucks, and you're making three percent. I'm going to go sell real estate." <laughs> And so I have an array of full frame Nikon cameras, full, half frame and full frame wow. Canon cameras, GoPros, you know, sliders, tripods. I mean, I could geek out on uh, right. hardware uh, at all times, but this thing is with me at all times. And so mm -hmm. the answer is, you know, whatever camera is closest to you. And so there's a bunch of apps that uh, you can use on your uh, on your Android or your iPhone. And so like Movie Pro or iFilmic Pro, just so you can have manual control over your exposure and your focus, um, you can come really damn close because the thing is, yeah, I've got a, a great full frame camera that shoots 1080 at 120 frames per second with all these fancy lenses and I can make Hollywood quality videos that are just gorgeous, but guess what? Nobody gives a shit because they're gonna watch it on three inches at 480 unless they're on Wi-Fi and they go and they click the HD. So like one out of every thousand people is actually going to watch it in that gorgeous 4K that you've spent all that time and money editing or producing it in, or you can just shoot it on your phone and getting the message out is a hundred times more important and telling a story that's engaging that people actually give a shit about is what matters. Yeah. So, so yeah, do I like running around with my big fancy camera and does it produce a better image? Yes, but at the end of the day, some of my most successful videos were shot on like an iPhone 6. Uh, it just, it doesn't matter. Anything else that you would bring? Like, I mean, you have the pods, obviously the, those are I, iPhone specific, but anything else sound related, light related, stabilized or anything like that that you might use? So, I mean, for DSLRs, I've got a, um, uh, a glide cam. I've got a three axis gimbal. The Fayu Tech or Fayu Tech is super cheap. Um, it's a Chinese knockoff of some of the bigger name brand things. And it was like a hundred bucks and it works. Um, you know, wide angle lens for a phone. I think the one thing that you absolutely have to have um, is a microphone. And so whether it's AirPods or the wired headphones, because every phone, when you get it from a manufacturer, is going to come with a wired mic. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And so like what Jen's got, if you don't want to wear it, you can take the headphone, put it into your shirt and let the microphone hang over. I've shot tons of videos that way. Uh, J-Man just held up a, uh, a lapel mic. So if you're using something <laughs> other than an iPhone 7 or later, you can get one of those for like 15 bucks, but when those rat bastards at Apple had to go and ruin everything and get rid of the 3.5 millimeter. And so the wired ones are like a hundred bucks and like I've used the Sennheiser one, but it's $200. Or you can just go get a pair of AirPods for 150 bucks and they work great. Or you can use the wired ones that come with your phone. Like you don't have to go spend a bunch of money. Like the, the biggest thing, you know, just I've talked to a bunch of panels. People ask me all the time, like, how do you make these videos? What, you know, what are you doing? Like, 
they all get caught up on gear, like a buddy of yeah, mine, yeah. just just went out and bought a Canon ADD and like two thousand dollars worth of equipment. I'm like, dude, you haven't even made your first video. You don't even know how to edit anything. You just blew two grand on equipment that you don't need. You know, like just start right. making videos with your phone and with the microphone you have. But I think that the microphone is the biggest thing. And then you know. Jen, I don't know if you're in front of a window or if you have a fancy light, but you look amazing. I do, thank you. <laughs> that is for me, that is, and I'm glad you said that because for me, it's lighting. It, lighting for me is everything. And yes, I do have a big fancy light. Yep. Um, I actually, I even have an affiliate link, which I won't share, but unless I'm allowed to, then I will. But but no, like if ahead. you are a female and you are you have any kind of vanity at all, then get a light. Lighting is everything. Yep. Yeah. Um, and so I find that just going and standing in front of a window will produce some great light or mm -hmm. I don't know, like a $15 ring light that's battery powered works usually pretty well. But whatever you've got there is much more powerful than a $15 ring light. Yeah, I do. It's it's a it's, I got it from Stellar Lighting System and it's an 18 inch ring light. It's, so it's fantastic. It, it it does have its own tripod and it's it's just really wonderful. But what I did before, because lighting was a problem for me before as well, um, but I would actually use my iPad, put it on a tripod and go outside, you know, at the whole magical times of day, yeah. which is like early evening. Um, and I would do a lot of videos from there what, before I had my light. But but because of vanity, I was, it stopped me from doing video for a long time because I thought it looked awful. But yeah, so I, and a hundred bucks, there's a hundred bucks worth so it. Is it Stellar, S-T-E-L-L-A-R? Correct. Yep. Stellar yeah. lighting system is, and they have all different sorts of them. I mean, they have all kinds. So yeah, Jen, you're making Jamie and I look bad. We kind of look at this. We look like terrorists in a cave, and you look awesome. <laughs> Get a well, light. My battery's low. That's why, because I use it so often. I'm going to show you guys mine. I started out, and I, do not, and I, I, I really thought I had it on my desk, and I don't, I don't have it. But I started out with a little itty-bitty ring light. It's about this big, um, and I would attach it to my phone, you know, and so, yeah. but... That's how I started, and it just wasn't enough. So I that was probably – I think the light was my second purchase directly after my camera. Um, so, yeah. What kind so of camera are you using? Um, I just use I, – I bought a cheap Logitech, you know, yeah. HD Logitech, and it works great. It works really well. And now I will tell you, it's almost – it's, it's almost – um, not quite as good as an iPhone camera, to be quite honest. Like when I do yeah. it from, from an iPhone, it's really comparable, you know, although I lost my iPhone, so but that's a whole different set of conversations. But, but yeah, I mean, if you have an iPhone, you're good. You, that's it. Get a, a tripod is your friend, right? Yeah. So in, to speed things up, um, I've gone completely tripodless and sliderless and gimbal just because like shooting something used to take two hours or an hour and a half on site to shoot it. And so wow. what I do is I'll shoot whatever I shoot. I shoot it at, at least 60 frames per second or 120. Then I take it and I slow it down uh, and throw stabilization on it in final cut. And you know, it's not as good. But like I can do a slider shot with my phone or slide in or a tilt or a pan oh, really? and take it and cut it down into slow motion at 50% and it looks great. And it, it, it expedites the production process tenfold. It's not even funny how much time it saves me. Like I can go in, I can shoot a full listing video with my phone in 15 minutes and edit it in 30. Whereas it used to take That's me impressive. like... With slider, tripod, glide cam, like it's been two and a half hours, two hours on site shooting it, and then two, two and a half hours editing it. And I've realized like videos that were four and five minutes long suck. Nobody cares. Nobody even comes Nobody close cares. to watching. The only thing that matters is the first 10 seconds. That's right. it. Yeah. And if you don't get them then, you're not going to get them. Yeah. They're not going to come back. Very seldom. Well, then. That'll segue us into programs and editing because, Morgan, it seems like with your background, 
you're a little bit more advanced than the average person would be when it right. comes to post production yeah. editing. What what kind of basic like programs and like when you say edit it, do you just like shoot it on your phone, edit on your phone, publish, yep. or do you upload to your computer, edit there? What's your process like? So yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Is the All answer depends. to so I so the two the two big editing platforms are Adobe Premiere Pro, which is a very professional uh, level program that you could that Hollywood uses. The problem with Premiere Pro is it is a resource hog, and so I've got a custom built uh, tower at home that is. I won't go into the nerd specs, but just understand that Apple doesn't even make a computer as powerful as this thing. And so the problem is Premiere Pro. Um, it's such a resource song. You have to have a huge computer and workstation to edit on it. And so I used that for a year and a half. And then I switched over mm -hmm. to Final Cut and made the switch to this just piece of crap Apple laptop. Like, Apple's the worst. And I know I'm getting flamed right now and people are just hate comments. Like, it's a beautiful <laughs> piece of machinery. And I switched just so I could use Final Cut because Final Cut will run on a laptop and it just the way it works is much lighter and smoother, and you can get plugins that make your graphics great. So, you know, Premiere is great. I use Final Cut ninety percent of the time, and then, you know, iMovie's great. I, I edit tons of videos in yeah. iMovie. Like if, if I'm on site, I'll do it in iMovie. I also um, Adobe Premiere Clip, I think, is a great um, uh, a great app for your iPhone. It is completely free. Uh, they also have it for Android. It's super easy to use. Um, and, you know, it's got great audio control. So my answer is I use everything. I would say Final Cut Pro 90% of the time uh, just because of lower third and title plugins. Um, and then, you know, but I still use my phone all the time. Like if I need to do a quick and dirty, uh, I'm on site. I've got 15 minutes. I'm going to make a quick video. There's nothing wrong with iMovie. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with Adobe Premiere Clip. What about you, Jen? Well, you know, I don't do a whole lot of editing of anything. And just because 90% of what I do is live and or um, from a webinar sort of platform. So from my webinars, I use Crowdcast which I love because I can stream it to my Facebook and then it's live, then it shows as a live video. Um, yes? You do a webinar in your real estate business? I do. I do lots of webinars. Go on. Um, so, and I like that platform because I can do like screen sharing, like I did a webinar for Fizbo's. You know, yep. so when I call Fizbo's, I direct them now to my webinar that they can get trade secrets about real estate, right? Costs them nothing, but I get email address. I mean, so it's a lead generation. Yeah. Thing, so is that right? something so you smart. host weekly or is it pre-recorded? Um, oh, no. I, I Well, I host it live and then it's recorded, right? So yeah. while I'm doing it, it is recorded. And then I can share the link that, hey, if you missed it, you can watch it on playback. Kind of the same concept as this, except it's, just it's streamed into Facebook instead of it's it's like a whole different. I mean, it's like a whole, in order to chat with me, I say you have to be on Crowdcast because I can't monitor both. Yeah. Um, but so I love the webinar platform. I like it because as a professional, as a real estate professional, there's a lot of things that we can do with that to generate some income in terms of you can sell them if you want to. Um, you can. It's just it's just a great. Now I think it's costly. Um, but it's a nice feature to have, especially if you're dealing with people that aren't in your general area. You can consult with them one on one, whatever. But um, and then crowdcast, I'm sorry, two words. Is it crowdcast? Two words it's, or one word? Yep, it's one word. Crowdcast. I think it's crowdcast.io is the actual. And I've done webinar jam. That was okay, um, but crowdcast I think is my favorite webinar platform. Um, it costs about $700 a year, and I think it's worth its weight in gold because I can then do trainings. It, there's just a lot more you can do with it to sort of get in front of the public in a different yeah. way than just listings and solds and, you know. 
So, I'm intrigued. I want to try this. You really should. And you can, if you go to my page, you can kind of see some of my old videos and you can tell because my screen is shared. So it's not always me in your face. It's, you know, I'm sharing my screen and we're going over, you know, A, B, C, and D, you know, mm -hmm. kind of a platform. Cause I like education. I'm all about educating the public. Um, so it's a great way to do that. Um, and especially if, if you, if I think if your um, audience is mostly real estate agents, it's a really great way to sort of like to share, so, you know, different links. And anyway, I don't know. But um, so, and then in terms of video, in terms of like on my phone when I pre-record, which I'm horrible at, um, so I try to stay away from that. And it's interesting because you love it, and I'm like, I can't, I can't do it. So um, I have. 400 videos that I'll never ever use, <laughs> but uh, and so I do use bit is what is a video shop and that's a free app and um, it's got filters, ladies. There's filters which I like. So anyway, so that's what I use if I'm going to pre-record as video shop. But that's it. That's all. Nothing else. Oh shop. Okay, so in regards to the webinars, I'm using right now BeLive.TV. It's very similar to what you're talking about with the Crowdcast. Right. And that it, this stream through Facebook. I'm not on Facebook right now. I'm on BeLive.TV. And I'll just give everybody a peek behind the wizard screen so you can see what it looks like on my end. All right, can you guys see that? No, not yet. There might be a little bit of a delay. There we go. Here we go. Oops, something's happening. You guys got rotated? Yep. Yep. Okay. Shoot. See that? So I can go solo screen on that. So here's my question for you. Does this program, does it allow you to interact with your Facebook live feed and comments and questions that you're getting on Facebook? So it creates the, the the broadcast within the program. You can see like I've created this and then the comments are streaming here on the right hand side. From Facebook. And then that's we, awesome. See, that's a yeah, better, I, think that's I, I could go like this and say, hey, if you want to subscribe to the show, and I, this is a comment that I put in there, I hit show and it brings it up on screen. So see, it, it's also a good smart. way to engage. It's a good way to engage with your audience and recognize people when they're commenting or, or somebody a lot of times we'll just uh, talk about something, a good nugget of information that was shared by one of the, the guests, and I always will bring that up on the screen. And I, I can have up to four people, but if it was just me and another person, I could share a Facebook album. So that's where I, I will bring in, like, I did something with a, a mortgage guy on rehab loans. They had, like, 10 different rehab loans. So he sent me his PowerPoint. From the PowerPoint, I, I made him JPEGs. I made a photo album within Facebook, and now we have the presentation as we went along rather than just us being talking heads, like you said. And it kind of helps to boost engagement. Um, hmm. Real, real yeah, quick aside, I the uh, so mortgage brokers with the new uh, Facebook privacy and security, you know, like all the, the ad platforms changing, all those groups are going away. And so now they're really deep into privacy policies. And so I read an article recently and also there's a, a lender in my local market that used to run a bunch of Facebook ads for uh, mortgage apps and he didn't have an appropriate privacy policy and they blocked his ad account because the privacy policy on the landing page wasn't up to snuff. So, I mean, things are getting real serious with uh, Facebook and yeah, it's... Well, have you all heard that... Um like the American Disability Act, they're, from what I understand, live video and those kinds of things are going to make us start putting captions up so that yeah. folks who are blind, you know, are, can, are deaf are going to be able to. So I don't know how that's going to affect our industry, but I think there, I think it will ultimately. Yeah. yeah. So it'll be interesting to see what happens as that, you know, gets a little closer, but I think it will affect our industry. It's going to have to. Yeah. I mean, yeah, go ahead, Morgan. I was just say, like, I, I'm not perfect at this, but I always try and go in and add captions to every video I do because, you know, a good portion of my audience is at work or, right. you know, in a public place and they can't really listen to it, but they can certainly read captions. 
And so that's one thing like I can, I've got data, like the engagement and the watch time goes up significantly when I have captions versus when I don't, especially when it just pops up to me talking to the camera instead of showing a sexy bathroom or a kitchen or something like that. Mm -hmm. right. I was going to say the, um, I teach the ePro certification course and we talk about that, that pretty soon with ADA compliance, you will have to have captions on your videos that you're, yeah. you're posting publicly. Um, and Morgan could speak to this. Facebook and YouTube will, will create them automatically, but then you have to go in yeah, they and stink. edit them. They, they suck. Yeah, they're bad. Awesome. <laughs> they're bad. I'm a fan <laughs> of it totally messes up all the time. But there's an app called Clips with uh, with Apple where it'll transcribe it automatically for you. You just have to create the video within the app, which I don't love. Um, and it's probably 90%, 95% accurate in comparison. So I'll, I'll use it sometimes for like an intro to a video or something like that. I'm not going to record a whole right. segment um, in there. I have an outsourcer in the Philippines that I found through Upwork. And so she goes in and um, does it, and it's extremely cost effective. Um, I haven't mm -hmm. found like a, a, an app or a service that's you know perfect. And so... I will have, I'll go ahead and post it to Facebook, let their automated thing run. And then I have her go back in the next day and clean it up for me. Perfect. Probably it's, you know, four to six bucks an hour or something like that, right? Four and a quarter. Four and a quarter. Yeah, I mean, you can't beat it. It's a great yeah. way to do it. And there's also, there's also a, 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 another way to use video is to, you can send it to a service and they will put it into a blog for you. And so not only will they transcribe it, and then you can you can put the same information into your blog, which is a huge time saver. And I wish, I and it's on the tip of my tongue, and I can't remember the service, and I'll come back and maybe add it in the comments, but um, that's a great option. I mean, and I think that's why video is so powerful is because we can use it in so many different ways. Um, you know, such as the caption and, you know, and then blogging. I and mean, it's just, it's, it's fantastic. I mean, what else can yeah. you do once and use it on so many different platforms? Nothing. Yeah. So I have a well, dirty confession. Yeah. I got rid of my website. Completely uh, did away you, with it. Yeah. Do we need it? I mean, I mean, I have a landing page that is just a single page. It's about me. Yeah. And then there's, uh, for buyers and for sellers, and the buyer is there's an information pack, and the sellers is a home value thing that I built an Insta page, because I was I've tried conversion, I've tried um, diverse solutions, I've tried real geeks, I've tried all the big ones except for Curator, and I've seen the backside of Curator, and I can't understand why anybody could justify that expense. But anyway, <laughs> so I just went to that, and I treat YouTube as my blog um, because. Oh, smart. Smart. Because YouTube is the second largest search engine in the world, and my long tail Smart. keywords, after two years of taking things and using my blog as the, the home and then publishing everything to YouTube, whenever I would come up in a long tail SEO search, it was my YouTube video. It was never the article because you know my crappy little WordPress website or whatever you know service I was using didn't work. But like if you search the five best neighborhoods in Lexington, Kentucky. Uh, new construction, Lexington, Kentucky, or you just type Lexington, Kentucky real estate. You know, I hit the first page of Google every single time, and especially if you click that video tab, it's literally like 30 of my videos and like one other one. And I came to the realization that you know YouTube was a hundred times better for SEO, and so why am I putting all this time and effort and spending two, three, four, five hundred dollars a month on a website? And you know, nobody's going to use my website search because let's face it, Zillow's a hundred times better user experience than anything right. you could ever buy off the shelf. So why am I wasting all this money and now I take that money and sink it into marketing? Hmm, I have questions. <laughs> well, that, I mean, I, that's a good point. And let's talk about repurposing since, you know, we, we talked about Facebook. Morgan does some pre-recorded videos. Jen does more like, like how do you repurpose these videos? I know Morgan's answer is going to be YouTube, but what else? What else? How are, how are you doing it? And what's the, the time frame, the turnaround? right away you have somebody that does it like get into the details there because i think some people get stuck with that so everything gets published well recently everything gets published to igtv i'm not having a whole lot of success there but i think that 
you know, Instagram, if you look and they now got the IGTV thing notification, that's annoying as hell because you can't get rid of it when you scroll and it just drives me crazy, but it's driving <laughs> engagement. And so everything goes there. When I'm on site shooting something, I'll shoot uh, an Instagram story uh, about it. And I've also got an admin that works for me and we'll chop things up, you know, and use a, uh, just a screenshot or the thumbnail put it on Instagram to direct people either to Facebook or to my YouTube channel. Like YouTube's my, is my star. And so everything lives there and I try and direct traffic there unless it's, you know, always upload to YouTube and Facebook separately because nothing kills right. views more than trying to direct Facebook traffic to YouTube or Instagram traffic to YouTube. But I'll try and get them to go look at the video. Um, and I've got a, an admin that you know, chops it up and puts it across. And then like, I really try and use the Instagram stories to talk about the video while I'm making the video, kind of like a behind the scenes. And oh, so, and so like when somebody sees, Hey, I was shooting this house today and they saw me talking about this cool shower. And then the next day they see the, like the super professional fancy camera version of it. They're kind of like, it, it just creates, I don't know, continuity. Maybe they, they kind of see like it, it's all intertwined and they feel like they're getting behind yeah. the scenes look at it. Yeah, I like that. It kind of ties in with, now I think it helps to brand you a little bit more just so they could see, like seeing behind the scenes, it's almost like it's more personal mm -hmm. than if you just produced this great video and they're like, well, Morgan, he makes great videos because he's a video guy. It's too high of a level for me to, and if they see the behind the scenes, they could see like, it's just you with a camera and this and that and you get things done. Yeah. Uh, Jen, yeah. Jen, what about I you? I, if I were you, Morgan, what I would do with that, and I know we're not each other, but what if you started to go live, did some of your live videos, you said you don't do a lot of live, but do that behind the scenes live. Is that what you're, is that what you're essentially doing or no? I, do you go live while you're shooting, like so that you, because people mm -hmm. love secrets and they love to be like, they, they like to, like, they like to know the inside scoop. So that might be a really great, avenue for you to start doing some of that live like videos you know going live letting somebody else do that i don't know i don't know how that would work but that, anyway um, you're gonna get tagged i'm gonna do it i'm not doing it today i'll do it on monday and i'm gonna tag you in it we'll see oh, I so how it goes so. i need I comments out of you i need, I need oh, a strong I like three or four word comment oh yeah and then i'm gonna hit that little join live video and i'm gonna be up in the corner <laughs> there we go <laughs> Um, so no, we'll be, that'll be a lot of fun. I think that would be kind of fun and kind of unique because, um, as much as I love video, I'm such an amateur and hearing you speak gives me a lot of hope, but for what you do, I have to pay a lot of money to hire somebody else to do. Um, so it's really cool to watch somebody who's actually in the industry with me yeah. with the boots on the ground doing this sort of high end kind of stuff. I think it's great. So, but I would love to see it in action. So anyway, but what was the question? I digress. <laughs> <laughs> Repurposing. So how do you repurpose your live videos? Cause it's a little bit different when I do a lot of live, you download it and like, where, where does it go? What do you do? Right. Leave it I, well, I do. I do upload mostly everything into YouTube, and for the same reason, because if Facebook goes away, I don't want to lose my my information. Um, but and then, of course, the blogging I think is really smart. Is to you know to in that way the blogs are done. I do have a website, and I use conversion. I I, I don't know that I love it quite yet, but it's okay. Um, but I do it for lead gen. So I don't do it for the same reason. You know, I don't do it to get myself out there. It's really just lead gen. Um, but video, and I, you know, I don't, I don't know. I think, I think you can use it video just in a, in a lot. And if you, you can, up, well, see, in, I don't do Instagram a whole lot because Instagram is lifestyle to me. And I really, I haven't been able to convince myself exactly how to sell the lifestyle via vi like video. I haven't, I haven't been able to figure that out. Once I do, I'll let you know. But I would just say for me, the, the reuse it would be blogging, putting it in different different platforms, because the more the merrier, the more you're out there, like you said, Google's going to find you. So I would, yeah. That's okay. it. I, I would say that if you like, if you like Facebook Live, you're going to love IG Stories. You can also go live on IG. And IG Stories is kind of like that quick and dirty behind the scenes because it's in a nine sixteenths ratio. So it's a vertical ratio. 
Right. So it's really hard to repurpose horizontal content. It's it's a nightmare. Like you can do it, but it's such a tight angle, it stinks. And so I use IG stories kind of like my behind the scenes. And I, anytime I go and show a house, I just take a quick shot, you know, a little something about it. Um, mm -hmm. And the engagement's unbelievable because people really? are, it is, it is so much better than Facebook. It's not even funny. I'm going to have to do it. I'm going to have to do it. Yeah. Because the, they can't, they're not mm -hmm. scrolling up and down. They either have to tap right or they have to wait 15 seconds for that clip to be over. And they'll at least watch two seconds of the clip to see what's going on. Then they'll tap to go to the next one and tap to go to the next one. And as long as you've got something remotely engaging, like the watch time relative to a Facebook video is off the charts. And it, it's much easier to start a conversation with somebody because they feel a little bit more personal. I don't know. I just That's been my experience with it. Yeah, I know, and I know nothing about IG, nothing. Like, I, I think I'm linked to it on one of my Facebook pages. I don't even know for sure. Um, yeah. So, I don't know. Yeah. Face, I'm, I'm I love Facebook. Facebook is my one true love. It was my first love. Yeah. And, yeah. like, I've figured out how to do Facebook ads, and it's yeah. it's definitely where I'm at. But Facebook is so quickly becoming a dumpster fire of just terrible people. Um, and I feel like Instagram is just a, a happier place to be. And it's it just has a more positive community. Yeah. It is. That's the difference, I think. Well, Jen, to get you over the hump, I would say real estate is a lifestyle. Everything you do in the community is, is part of it. Much like Morgan said, it's, it's not the home tours, but anything that you're doing, you could put on there. As you guys right. were talking, I started my live stream on my Instagram with a behind the scenes look at the broadcast. Yes. Oh, how so, fun. Yeah, yeah. I'll, stories. I'll, I'll tag you guys in it later. Uh, but yeah. let's talk about challenges, challenges and or most epic failures. Because so often I think video folks talk about, oh, great. It's great. I do this. It's awesome. But let's talk about when you really had a problem or a mess up or something happened so that people can see that we're not all perfect and like stuff happens. I can't wait to hear from Morgan on this. I bet you have some <laughs> great stuff. You're so good, but I know. You go, Jen. You go, you go, you go. You know, probably the worst thing that's ever happened to me is I was doing a, I, I was doing a, a cabinetry painting class. I, I was actually painting a customer's cabinets in, in my house and showing how to do it without getting roller marks and brush brush strokes because everything I paint by hand. And um, thankfully it wasn't heavily, you know, a lot of people weren't, it was late in the evening and I was tired and I was upside down. And so all, and I, to see myself, to like see the comments, I wasn't upside down, but all of my, everybody kept saying, you know, you're upside down, you're upside down, you're, up, you know, how do you fix it? Um, Oh no. So what do you do? Do you keep going or do you just bail? I kept going. I'm like, hey, watch me upside down. I don't care. You know, because <laughs> why? Because because I was getting engaged with it and I'm like, I don't care. Absolutely. Tell me I'm Facebook doesn't care what if I'm upside down, right? So that's probably been like my biggest like you know WTF moment, probably. Like I, I don't even know I don't even know what happened or or I, I don't know. I don't know what I did. I still don't know, but yeah. Whatever it is, what it is. It's not that bad. I mean, I have a friend <laughs> of mine that says when bad things happen, he's like, "Did you die? Did you die? Yeah, right. <laughs> but did you die? <laughs> did right. you die? Morgan, what yeah. about you? I, I'm sure you have a good one. Ah, uh, gosh, where do I start? So, uh, just this, <laughs> I I have thought about taking it down from YouTube, but it's still there at the very beginning of my channel. I did a home buyer seminar in four videos and I had this great funnel and I, it was this great advertising deal and I just knew I was gonna I was gonna sell ten million dollars worth of buyers off of this thing and it was an absolute disaster the ads suck but more importantly for some reason I thought that looking at the camera like this was going to be the way to connect to my audience by looking 15 degrees past them and I was in this red, I was in this room that had a red leather wallpaper behind me. And it just, Ooh, it was, oh, it was awful. It was awful. And like, I look back at it now and I cringe, but I like, 
I'm not going to delete it because it's getting views and maybe somebody will see this and hopefully realize that I'm not a complete failure at life and go watch another video. Um, <laughs> and then, so if anybody's familiar with Casey Neistat, he carries a huge camera with a, a Joby Gorilla Pod and a big DSLR with a big fuzzy microphone on it. I have the exact same rig because he's my hero and one day I'm going to die and come back as him. Um, and so when you're out in public, that draws a lot of attention. And so mm -hmm. I I was doing a public park tour and I've done a public park tour before with a GoPro and a phone and I had my son with me. You know, GoPro, phone, son, you just look like a caring dad who is, you know, you know trying to capture the moment and you're a great guy. You go to a public park at two o'clock in the afternoon with this huge camera <laughs> without a kid, you just look like a Chester molester. And yes, I had true. a parent come up and talk to me and I had to leave and put it away. It was, it was real bad. And so it was at that point that I went and made business cars, cards that said, congratulations, you're on the show. Here's how you can see it. And so I've got business cards. So anytime somebody comes out to me in public while I'm shooting a video with this big, ridiculous camera rig, I just hand them a business card. And for some reason it legitimizes me and uh, saves me, but I still, the only time, I, I don't go to public parks anymore without my son. Those are the rules. <laughs> so true. That's, that's such a good point. You're like, who's that creepy guy with the camera walking around talking to himself, right? right. Yeah, it, it didn't, yeah. Yeah, I always and wonder that too. I'm always like, you know, at what point are we supposed to ask for permission? Are we just supposed to just shoot it anyway? Are we supposed, you know, how do you, how to, yeah, I don't know. I just usually wait until there's not anybody around and I don't put people in my video with me. But, you know, I don't know. Is there, is there an age, an age that we're supposed to have them sign off to, or get permission? I don't know how that works. So, I don't know. the rule is if you're in public, there's no expectation of privacy and you don't have to have anyone's permission. Um, oh, okay. And so, like this yeah. is yep exactly right if there's a reasonable expectation of privacy then like if they're in a changing room or someplace like that obviously but if yeah. they're in a public park it still won't stop people from tackling morgan with his camera without uh, his yeah, camera. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I, I, at the end of the day that's yeah. not getting people to know like and trust me which is the end of, you know, <laughs> well, right. but it's a great way to right. strike up a conversation you know but then right. it, it is you should have to today have some sort of a fun t-shirt made that you can wear and so oh, I've, that's a great idea i've actually thought about it um yeah so I mailchimp is a uh, a great example so i hate them there's better options right now but mm -hmm. when i mm -hmm. first started a mailchimp account like eight years ago they sent me the softest, most well-fitting T-shirt I've ever owned in my entire life, and it's got the the Mailchimp logo on it. And everybody asks me if it's Curious George, and I wear the shirt everywhere. And I still have a Mailchimp account because they sent me a T-shirt eight years ago that I wear every day. Um, stupid, but it worked. It yeah. works. Well, I'll I'll share you with you guys my one. A, I've had so many epic fails. It's, it's too many to, to name, but the Reese bad boys here, this, we were lobbying at our state capitol for, you know, the Realtor Political Action Committee. I have yep. all these great talking points. I do a fantastic live broadcast. Like, I'm like, it's just Jeremiah, it's J-Man Monero. We're here. Da -da 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 -da. Nail it, in my opinion, my humbled opinion, of course. All <laughs> people heard was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Because my buddy who's holding my, my camera has his thumb over the mic. Like, oh, you know, you hold it like this. Ooh. Yeah. And I'm like, nice. oh, man, that'll only happen. Because then we, we had to, couldn't redo it. It was something that, like, so I said, that's only going to happen to me one time. Now I always use those lapel mics just uh, to be sure. And then put some, yeah. put some I noise. had the same thing happen a week ago. So this thing was like that and wasn't plugged all the way in. And so uh -huh. I had zero audio for the intro to the video, but I ended up captioning it and it had over 10,000 views and a hundred shares. Mm -hmm. uh, even though there was, there was no, uh, there was no audio for the first like 30 seconds. Holy cow. Wow. 
Let's go. Wow, I'm jealous, Morgan. Well, let's, uh, let's do, I don't know. I, I think I think share, share in the comments or I'll, I can post it for you. Morgan, what's what's your YouTube channel so folks could check it out? Atlas Trust Real Estate. Atlas. And the same on Facebook. Ooh. And then the, the video without sound was uh, Spin Bikes. It was like a week ago, two weeks ago. Spin Bikes? Yep. It's a bike I'm share. I'm excited program. to go back and watch the red one. I can't wait. <laughs> Please don't. It's not on my Facebook. It's at the very beginning of time <laughs> on my YouTube channel. And I actually I went, back and, I went back and looked at it, like, I don't know, about two weeks ago. And just, oh, it, it, it hurt. Like, you know you cringe because you're so uncomfortable. You watch it. Oh, there's, I have so many bad videos and I just don't care. I just, I mean, there, there's a lot, there's some, I'm like super pale and mm -hmm. I'm like, God, you know, and I just, I, I'm leaving them. I just don't care. I mean, yep. I, here it is at the end of the day, I just, I got over myself, right? Yep. I, I can sit and pick myself apart all day long. I just can't allow that to interrupt this business, right? And so I yep. won't, I, and most days I don't even go back and rewatch my videos. I just won't even do it because I just <laughs> don't. But yep. It hurts. Yeah. Yeah, it's hard. And so, so yeah, move forward. I know I've, I've had this conversation with, I don't know, a hundred different agents about how do you get started in video and stuff. And I feel like women are much more, less likely to actually hit the upload button because you know, my hair has to be perfect. My makeup has to be perfect. The lighting has to be perfect. Whereas, yeah. you know, a lot of guys just, eh, whatever, I'm in a tank top and I haven't, you know, showered in mm -hmm. two days. I don't care. Right. Well, I think expectation is different for women. And I, I mean, I'm, I will admit it. I am a huge, I'm a, I'm a vanity. I'm, I have a vanity issue, right? But at the end, I know that people who love me, are still gonna say I mean I've, I've got the biggest nose probably on this this side of the United States I'm okay with it you know nobody <laughs> can tell me anything that I don't already know about myself and um, and I just decided you know what I, there's always going to be somebody uglier <laughs> Right. Don't worry about it, folks. There's always somebody right. uglier. There's our hashtag. Right. There's always right. somebody that's going to be better, worse, <laughs> uglier, prettier. Yep. I mean, it doesn't matter who you are. Just be you and love who you are. Love the skin you're in and just do it. You've yep. got zero to lose and nothing to gain. I mean, yep. and everything to gain. Every yeah, yeah. See, wasn't that good? See how I did that? Now I'm yeah. just going to recover and keep going, right? So yeah, you just you just do it. You just do it. You get over yourself and you just do it. But I do believe, I agree that women are it's harder, it's harder from a woman's perspective because we have so many expectations that I think society put on us, but I think we put on ourselves way more than society does. I don't know. Yeah. And I think that, you know, if you just, you know, had a, a dirty ponytail, didn't have any uh, you know, makeup right. on. I think that's a super real video that yes. would show people that you're not fake and shows that you really are and, you know, just builds a deeper relationship with them. But getting somebody to do that's really, really hard. Well, my painting videos are like that one. I mean, I'm here to tell you my hair. I mean, I'm painted. I'm covered in paint. My nails are half of them are broken off. If I'm doing a project, I don't get my nails done for a couple of weeks. Yeah. I mean, I don't have makeup on. Sometimes I haven't even had a shower, you know, yeah. and, and I'm not going to wear a hat because it's going to create a shadow over my piece. And, you know, so, and, and I have paint and it just, I just don't care. I just, I've gotten to the point that I'm, I'm just like, you know what, this is where it's going. And if, if I don't do it, somebody else is going to, and damn it, I'm going to do it. And it doesn't have to be great. It doesn't have to be great. It just has to be me. Right. Mm hmm. Well, uh, Jen, I, that's going to be your challenge in, in the next couple of weeks. And what we want you to do is after you're done doing one of your painting videos that you then record a real estate video right after covered in paint, hair back. Okay. 
I'll do it. <laughs> Give me a topic though, because I'm fresh out. Be I, I need like a topic. Us, right? Right. I'd love it. Yeah, do it. I'll do it. And Jen, on the topic of noses, um, I may or may not have sometime <laughs> when I was 19 or 20, may have been a bar fight and one Perfect. nostril is bigger than the other because it's all yeah, crooked. Well, and let me tell you, whenever I hold my camera down, like it's the only thing I see. Oh, yeah. It's the only thing. So nobody else ever mentions it, but it drives me crazy. So I always have to film from way oh, out here. Oh, so what? Double chin if I'm down here. I get it. up the, yeah. I mean, I can fit my thumb up my nostril, really. I mean, you want to talk to me about a big nose? <laughs> I'm here to tell you. I would do it, but I'm not the host, right? This okay, fair enough. Video. Um, but I Jane, Ann, did you think this is where this is going to go? <laughs> no, but sometimes they just let it go where it may, you know, it doesn't matter. I mean, you know, it is what it is. It's reality. That's what yep. it is. Um, but I do want to say one thing if I can, I don't, I don't know if I have, I'm just going to do it. Just do if it. I have was one piece of advice for any realtor anywhere who, who's starting to do live video, um, could you please just do me a one favor and stop doing your live video in your car with your children in the back seat while you're driving down the road? I like if you are that afraid to do live video that you have to do it with your children in the back seat, driving your 500,000 pound weapon down Main Street, just don't do it. That's it. That's what I would say. Don't do it while you're driving. And I see it all the time, and it makes me crazy. Jen, I'm sorry, but I had to get the kids to daycare. I only had so much time to do the video, and uh, you know, no, I'm just kidding. Yeah. I wait till they get out of the car. And if you do have to do it in your car, pull over. Don't do it while you're driving, or get a little thing. You know, because I, I practiced a lot while I was driving, but I didn't hold my camera, and I wasn't live. Oh, yeah, yeah, no. I just. I have you know, two different phone mounts. I have one on the windshield over here, this angle, then right. I have one that attaches to the, uh, you can't see it here, one over here in right. the windshield, then I have another one that's on the- Get the equipment. You know, the thing that blows the air. So you should go More check out Jessica. You should go check out Jessica Riffle Edwards. She's down in North Carolina. I've never spoken to her personally, but holy hell, how she gets that many views on YouTube videos about real estate of her just sitting in a car talking just blows Always. my mind. I don't Always mind being in the car. I don't mind you being in the car. And I think a lot of people feel secure in their car because you're alone and there's no distractions. Where I have a problem is when you're live and you're looking at the phone and you're and you can see kids and you're 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 live looking at this phone while you're driving. That is where I have it. I just think it's unsafe and it just scares the daylights out of me. I maybe I'm old. I don't know. I. I I just think you should be careful about that. I don't know. Maybe I'm old school. Am I? No, no, no. I, don't know. I agree. You no, have absolutely. Like you have a mount, right? Get a mount, and then you can do you can do you know car videos all you want because it's no different than just talking to yourself like a crazy person, which I'm good at. But get a mount. Don't hold the. F I just anyway. Soapbox moment. I'm sorry. I'll step off. No, it's okay. I mean, it's it's a great way. I I use the mount. I just hit, depending if I'm doing IGTV or if it's a live video, just hit it and then I kind of start talk, talking. I might start before looking at the camera and then driving, but I'm still talking. Mm -hmm. That's more of a video blog style, blog style, I would say, where you don't necessarily yeah. kind of like you're self reflecting, if you will. Mm -hmm. uh, Morgan, what, any tips you have, especially since you're doing a lot of IGTV as well? Like, it's a pain in the butt with the 916 format compared to the. Yeah. So right now, just every time I upload a video, I am. Uh, and so this is super easy if you're using Premiere Pro or Final Cut, whereas it's not as easy if you're using an app on your phone. I just take the um, I take the the wide format, the four by three, and I create a new uh, video that's nine by 16 or 720 by 1280. And then take it and just zoom in so I'm only seeing like the inside, you know, like if you're looking at my face, you would see like from here to here um, right. and just repurpose the content. I'm not double shooting content, which isn't really what they want. And 
I don't know, I'm playing with it. I'm learning. You know, I'm not devoting a ton of time, but it's a lot easier to get people to follow or to IGTV from Instagram than it is from Instagram over to Facebook or Instagram over to YouTube. So hmm. I don't know, it's a work in progress. It's an experiment. So I'm yeah. sorry. And, and forgive me. I, I, I don't know because I'm not an IG girl. So IGTV is separate from this is like, it's All not different is it like, so it's a whole it's new th Instagram's oh. YouTube, if you will, just not as searchable. Oh, okay. Interesting. Yeah. I'm going to see, that's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to figure that out. Yeah, I think, I think Morgan it's, will this. it's like we're, we're building content right now. It's almost like you have to believe in it. If you build it, they will come because it's not. I, don't know, I think it, I think the app sucks right now. I think it's terrible. Totally sucks. Oh, but no. I mean, I'm still putting stuff on it because I think it, it'll gain traction. It'll get better. I think that's one thing that Instagram does do. They improve and make things better as they go. I mean, drastic changes just, compared to other social media platforms. Or they'll just steal somebody else's idea when they won't sell it to them and just make it themselves. <laughs> right. Well, that, that's yeah. called rip off and duplicate, right? I mean, it's R&D. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just, I don't know. I, I don't see a whole lot of benefit to it right now, but I know that they're going to improve it and they're going to fix it. And I want to have a body of content already there and, you know, a following instead of, you know, showing up late to the game. Yeah. Yeah. At what point though, is it going to be too late to the game? You know, I mean, yeah. I hopefully not with video. Hopefully it just does. I mean, it'll continue to evolve, but I mean, there's no better time than now. Absolutely. I absolutely agree with that. I mean, it costs me about six dollars to publish to IGTV every time because you know I produce one piece of content, and then I've got a, a publishing process, and my admin takes it, puts it in the new format, fixes it, and uploads it. So it takes them about a half an hour to do it. So you know, six bucks a video, why, why not? You know, it, is that something that um, a, a DIYer could do, or do 100%. you need to be a professional? Okay, so you don't have to you can one hundred percent do it. It just Okay. You know, uh, time consuming, I'm sure. So I'm a real estate agent and a digital marketer. And a lot of times like digital marketer is more time a week than real estate agent. Mm -hmm. And then you throw in like right now I'm in the middle of flipping a house and I didn't have a painter show up. So I spent eight hours painting a house yesterday so oh, that yeah. things could continue happening. And so, you know, it just comes down to like, if you don't have a ton of business and you, you've got spare time, like, I don't know of anything you should be doing other than creating content and cross posting. Mm -hmm. And like, I, I have no formal training in any of this. There's this amazing website uh, and you can type anything into it and it will teach you how to do it. It's called Google. It uh, is. Yeah. Yeah. And so between YouTube and Google, you can, you can teach yourself how to do anything and there's nothing that's rocket surgery. Just, Follow the, the screen recording and you can do it. Hmm. Good. I'll bring this up here. It's one of our last create content and cross posts in your spare time. It's, it's something that I find might like, you know, we have a rough winters up here. Rough. <laughs> yeah. I bet so. Where nobody wants to leave the house and whatever, just like you guys in the summertime, I would imagine sometimes. Yeah. And so that's when I get a ton of work done, a ton of videos, a ton of that, because it's like I have nothing else to do. And it's like I might as well grind out content and cross promotion and, and, and marketing, just like Morgan said. But I think that brings us to about an hour. I want to thank you guys again. Follow these people because they're doing great things with video. Find yourself a video mentor. If it's not these folks, somebody in your office, in your in your market, in your state. You go to the NAR YPN group. There's always people. There's so many different groups out there where people are willing to help, and uh, it, it's more about rising each other up. You know, the the rising Absolutely. tide raises all boats. all boats. That's right. And so again, thanks Morgan, thanks Jen, and and we're gonna end the broadcast. See ya. Say bye. End, end, end. <laughs>